Right, now I'm live. Okay, it's always tough to listen to a talk after lunch. So very briefly, which biometry formula? How are you going to calculate uh, which lens you put in? It's an area where there's some really exciting developments. So what do we know? Well, laser vision correction, pretty good. Okay, over 90% of patients with any modality in any system are getting within the good range now. That's the sort of benchmark. With lenses, it's less than 80%. It doesn't matter what biometry formula you use, getting between plus or minus 0.5. About one person in 10 up to that will be more than one diopter out. So needing to do focus adjustments after is not uncommon. How can we get better? So I'll just tell you what I was doing. Okay, we were using SRKT, so-called. I think there's these are second-generation formula, I think they're called, uh, and Hoffa Q for the shorter eyes. And um, we did a little bit of research looking at what results we were getting in the very long eyes and the very short eyes, and we found these formulae didn't work so well, so we were doing a little correction for that, tending to aim a little bit myopic in the eyes which were uh, wanting very low power lenses, less than five diopter lenses. Don't aim for zero, aim for a bit of myopia, you're likely to get uh, a, a zero result anyway. And similarly, at the very high powered end, that's what we were getting. The trouble with the uh, second generation formulas is that they move the uh, power curve for a lens um, up and down and assume it is the same shape for lenses throughout the axial length range. And actually that isn't true. Wolfgang Hages worked that out. And so rather than giving a single A constant, he has three constants. Um, that are used that modify the shape of the curve as you go through the range. So what am I doing now? I'm using the Hagus formulae, and uh, we use the Hagus L post LASIK. Uh, pretty good. You need to know which way the patient was corrected. Did they have a hyperopic correction or a myopic correction before? So you use the right formula, and you can cross check it with uh, with the other formulae if you want to. The Fites nomogram is the one we cross check it with. We use customized constants. This is very important if you're not already doing this. Don't read the lens constant straight from the manufacturer's box. Go to a website. If you Google ULIB, you will find a list of, of uh, results uh, in different populations for each lens type. And you can choose a customized A constant from that and use that. And that will translate across uh, into Hagus constants as well if you're using the Hagus formula. For regular astigmatism, we're using uh, a, a Barrett calculator that's available online from Alcon. It's free to air. Anyone can use it, and it works really well. One thing uh, that you've got to know about the uh, Barrett online calculator is it already makes the adjustments for you for posterior corneal astigmatism. So I don't know if you know this story, but uh, posterior corneal astigmatism it, um, it, it tends to work to give you an against the rule result. So you need to overcorrect against the rule sills and undercorrect uh, with the rule keratometric cylinders. And Doug Coach has got a nomogram for that, but it's already built in to the online calculator, the Barrett calculator. So you don't even have to think about it, okay? And, but don't do a double correction. Don't use the Barrett calculator and then use the coach nomogram, okay, because they're already together. Just worth knowing that. So Hagus is what I'm doing now and using the Barrett calculator for the toric lenses. And that, that, that works pretty well for me. And this is what I was saying about corneal astigmatism. Don't do a double correction. There's the Barrett calculator. You can find it online. So that's what I'm doing now. What am I looking at? What am I excited by? Well, this is the... A generation beyond Hagus, which is where the machine learning is coming in. And so just in one sentence, what is machine learning? It's a branch of artificial intelligence, but it's where instead of doing regression analysis, which is what, as well as optical models, what the formula we've been using up until now are based on, um, it's, it's using computers and with uh, different machine learning algorithms. Machine learning basically is a computer finding the answer to a problem without being told how to find it, okay? And what I would advise you to do, because it's so interesting, is just go away and look at it on the internet. It really is going to change everything in medicine that we do. It's, it's so important. But if you look at these machine learning-based formulae, uh, the one on the left-hand side here, 
the cane um, is doing better than any of the others here. And um, so this one is also, the hill formula is also based on machine learning. And you can see that there's, that's not doing quite so well in this study here, but that's because of the data set that it was tested on. All formally, if you test them on a set of patients and, and do the calculation to see what you would have got if you'd used this formula on this set of patients with this lens type, um, it, it, they work better for some lens types than others. So the Hill formula was, designed, was uh, derived from the Alcon lens set, whereas this was um, back calculated using a Zeiss lens. And so different formulae do a bit better with different lens, so you need to know this. But the broad message is that there's going to be a generation of formulae beyond Hagis. They're already available uh, to look at now. And so here's another one. This is from Damien Gatinel in Paris called the Pearl DGS formula. And again, look it up online. There's a calculator there for you already, so you can play with it. You can uh, just register with their site. It's called IOL Solver, I think. Did I mention that here? Yeah, here it is, IOL Solver. You check into that, and you see um, these boxes here that you can fill out straight from. You have to have IOL Master 700 biometry, OK? So it works well for that. Whereas if you have the Lens Star, you can go to the Hill site and do the same thing with their RBF formula. But you can then just type in the numbers and check what you're getting. Uh, from, say, you're using Hagus against this, okay? And if there's a big difference, you know, you maybe want to check your measurements or make a compromise, you know. But this is where it's going to go. So you've got the three generations of formulae. You've got the SRKK, modern formula, SRKT would be the sort of standard formula that most of us are using, half a Q for the short eyes. Or you've got the next generation on, if you've got the right machines to calculate, that's the Hagus formula. Always use customized A constants. Go to the ULIB site for those. Have a look at machine learning based formulae like the Kane, the Hill formula, or the uh, Pearl DGS. And you can start to play with those online now. And it's, it's, it's really exciting and interesting. Great. Great. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, we'll move on with uh, what 